chair now recognizes the gentleman from New York, Mr. Zeldin, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As a nation, supporting our veterans must always be one of our highest priorities. This bra these brave men and women who willingly and selflessly put their lives on the line while defending our country deserve the highest quality of life and care once they return home. According to the Suffolk County Veterans Service Agency, there are 83,254 veterans who live in my home county of Suffolk. With the highest population of veterans by county in New York State and one of the highest populations in the country, there is a significant need for increased care options for our veterans in Suffolk. There are so many options of quality care for veterans, but too often their choices are limited. Quality care can also come at great expense. In an effort to expand access to care for our veterans, I recently introduced bipartisan legislation in Congress, H.R. 2460, which would ensure that 70 percent or more service-connected disabled veterans are able to receive adult day health care, a daily program for disabled veterans who need extra assistance and special attention in their day-to-day -day lives. It comes at no cost to the veteran and their family because the program is defined as a reimbursable treatment option through the Department of Veterans Affairs. This legislation has strong bipartisan support in Congress, with over 45 co-sponsors, including the entire Long Island congressional delegation. My bill will greatly expand this great option of care for veterans on Long Island and across the country. Just last month, on April 20, 2016, the House Veterans Affairs Committee hosted a hearing of the Subcommittee on Health regarding my bill. And on April 29, 2016, the, the Health Subcommittee held up a markup favorably forwarding my bill to the full committee for full consideration or for being sent to the House floor for a vote. Working with my colleagues in the House and various veteran service organizations, I will continue pushing to get this bill passed out of committee in earnest to allow this bill to come to the House floor this year. While serving in the New York State Senate, I secured the funding necessary to create the PFC Joseph Dwyer Program, a peer-to-peer -peer support program for veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury. PFC Dwyer from Mount Sinai, New York, served in Iraq and received nationwide recognition for a photograph that went viral, showing him cradling a wounded Iraqi boy while his unit was fighting its way up to the capital city of Baghdad. Sadly, after returning home and struggling with PTSD, PFC Dwyer died in 2008. Created in his honor, the Dwyer program was initially launched in the counties of Suffolk, Jefferson, Saratoga, and Rensselaer. Since 2013, the program has expanded to over a dozen counties across New York. Earlier this year, I introduced bipartisan legislation in Congress, H.R. 4513, that will expand the Dwyer program on a national level so that every veteran in the U.S. eventually has access to a peer-to-peer -peer support group. This bill has strong bipartisan support, including the entire Long Island congressional delegation. I will continue working together with them and others in the fight to expand the Dwyer program. Additionally, on the east end of Long Island, working closely with the Peconic Bay Medical Center and VA, I secured an east end health care facility for veterans and their families at Peconic Bay's Manorville campus. After so bravely serving our country, this facility provides an important new option for veterans, increasing access to care for those who live on Long Island's East End while still allowing them to continue receiving the services and ongoing treatment at the VA hospital in Northport. There is so much more that Congress can do to improve the quality of life for our veterans. I will continue working to ensure that my bills that previously passed the House are signed into law, including H.R. 1569, to protect the benefits of deceased veterans, and H.R. 1187, which will eliminate the loan limit that the VA can guarantee for a veteran. Congress also must continue to reform the VA wherever it underserves a veteran. A recent series of USA Today articles reported that VA supervisors in multiple states instructed employees to falsify wait times. They must be held accountable. This is a slap in the face of our vets. Just last year, the House took a step forward by passing the VA Accountability Act of 2015, H.R. 1994, legislation that I co-sponsor that would make important reforms to the VA system, which will provide the necessary resources and the flexibility the VA needs to hold poor performing employees accountable. 
While I believe that the VA has 99% of employees generally caring about the work they do and wanting to help veterans, we must always ensure that the other 1% of those who are not acting in the best interest of veterans are held accountable. Our veterans deserve only the highest quality of care at our VA facilities. Fighting for our veterans who fought for us always has been and will always be one of my top priorities. And I will continue working in Congress to improve our veterans' quality of care in any way that we can. Thank you, and I'll yield it back. Time.